for the throne. I've been looking for like an official name for the team. Right now, I've been saying Mandy and Mandy and team. And um, th these ladies, they participate in a, a worship night every fourth Friday down in Rock Hill called a Worship Unplugged. So I would encourage you to go on to uh, Instagram and look up Worship Unplugged every f fourth Friday. Amazing atmosphere of just worship of, of everyone. So thank you, ladies, once, once again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. We will release our children now to Sprouts, which is our children's ministry. Thank y'all so much. Hey, Manny. Hey, Amadeus. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning again. First, I just want to say, I, you know, here at the place, we are blessed with uh, some great people who come to serve and come to, to operate. I mean, uh, Chris and Crystal, I mean, y'all need to be somewhere on, on somebody's stage or, or on somebody's TV or something. First of all, y'all not only look good, but y'all operate just with, with enthusiasm and with professionalism. And, and then Dr. Sophia, whoo, I, I could have just sat down right there. That was amazing. And, and just allowing the spirit to, you know how, I know, Dr. Sophia, you're, you're a little bit of a perfectionist. And you like things in order. So for God to come and wipe all that away and then just be obedient to just move by his leading is amazing. So, amen. Whew. All right, y'all, I'm, I'm excited. We're in week two of our series called Collide. Um, which is basically dealing with our faith in the current culture, which is kingdom culture over the worldly culture. And I don't even really need to talk about it. All you got to do is turn on, the, turn on the, the TV, look at the news, go on social media. The, king, the kingdom is being attacked by the things of this world. So last week was week number one, which we looked at standing firm in our faith. We looked at standing firm, and we understand that the worldly system and their values and their priorities are very different from that of the kingdom. Very, very different. And what we come to know that the things of the world sometimes can be seductive. They can be enticing. They can kind of try to draw us in. And we've all been drawn in by things that aren't necessarily the best for us. And what we learned last week is when we get drawn into those values and those ways and those priorities, there's no consistency, consistency there. They're unstable, and it's not a firm foundation to stand on. We also talked about how do we pursue the things of God, and we said that we need to be led by the Holy Spirit. We need to be led so th the Holy Spirit will lead us into the abundant life of Christ. See, Jesus gave his life so that I could have mine. But he didn't desire that we have a mediocre life or that we just get by. But he desired that we have that life and that we live it to the fullest. Not on the other side, but right here on the earth. We, he desires that we have a good time in him. Amen? So Jesus begins this process within us. He begins this process that takes each one of us from where we are, which for the most part is a self-centered life. Burger King, have it your way. Uh, or, or I like this one, do you. That, that's a big one. Do you. What is that? What, whatever it is that you want to do, do you. He takes us from a self-centered life to a life that is secure and firm when we stand in him. And But, but people always say, well, 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 Jesus loves us just the way we are. He absolutely does. Jesus loves you just as you are right now. But you know what else? He loves you way too much to leave you there. So I believe there are three things that God wants us to do to move us forward as we build the foundation living in faith. And the first one we're going to talk about today is being transformed. Check this out.
How many of y'all know about the movies, the Transformers? Y'all know about the Transformers? Man, I, I was getting all, I was ready to just sit down and, and, and get all locked in. Man, the Transformers, they were a really popular movie back in the day, and people, they are watched repeatedly on Netflix and YouTube and so forth. And the reason these movies were so successful was the whole idea about a transformer. An ordinary car would transform into a being that had superhero abilities. That when it's an ordinary vehicle, now it had superhero powers. And let me ask you, who wouldn't want the ability to transform on demand, to be able to change and shift on demand? Well, here I'm t here to tell you that all of the essential things that you need that are to transform or for transformation, the creator placed them inside of you. You didn't see them have to go somewhere to a store or anywhere. They transformed on demand. Everything was already inside. And so when we think about transformation, and uh, this word transformation is probably used the most when we talk about weight and weight loss. You hear that word, oh, the great body transformation. They transform themselves. That's where we hear it the most. And which ones are the ones that we look at the most? It's not where somebody lost 30 or 40 or 50 pounds, which is amazing, because by a show of hands, who would like to lose 30 pounds right now? Right now. Doesn't sound like a lot, but right now. Not, not you, KP. Not, not, not you, KP. <laughs> but we look at those who have lost over 100 pounds, and we say, wow, what an amazing transformation. Well, I'm here to tell you, I believe God that has the desire to do the same work in your life. He wants to change you from where you are to what he has called you to be. And so sometimes we get really caught up in the patterns of the world and the sinful nature of the world, and knowing, we know in our heart that it's ultimately not going to fulfill us. You know, when I want that butter pecan ice cream at 9.37 at night, and instead of getting one scoop, I get about six scoops. You know, I told, I was telling somebody I've changed the way I've decided to eat because God has been speaking to Pastor Pearl, and I, I'm saying this out in front of everyone. He's been speaking to us about changing our bodies because the work that he has for us to do, we need to be healthy. He need, we need to be healthy. I know for me, going cold turkey don't work for me. I can't go cold turkey on anything. So what I've done, I eat two cookies instead of 12. Moderation. I eat two cookies instead of 12. I don't think 12 of anything is too good for you anyway. But anyway, God knows best. And we're gonna, I'm going to give you a verse in the Bible that describes it very, very good, well. Oh, yeah. I forgot I, forgot I got a PowerPoint. I got my man back there. So our scripture for today is Romans 12 and 2. And as Mandu was saying, I love that, you know, very familiar scriptures in, in, in the Bible, but sometimes we get caught up in becoming familiar with them. Or if the pastor, pastor brings up, or anybody brings up a scripture and they start quoting, you finish what they said and you already got in your mind formulated what they're going to say. The thing about scripture is the more you read it and the more you have relationship with the scripture, the more God will reveal to you. Quick little Bible note for those who like to study your Bible. When you're looking at scripture, there's three things. One, you need to figure out who's talking, who is speaking. The second is, who are they talking to? And finally, what are they talking about? You need to look at those three things when you're looking at Scripture. All right, let's, let's read. And actually, I'm going to read five translations today. And I want you to listen really carefully or follow along, write notes, whatever you want to do. Romans 12 and 2. First version is the NIV version. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what, what God's will is, his good, and ple good, pleasing, and perfect will. NIV. King James. And be not 
conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That was the King James. New Living Translation. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. As a man thinketh, so is he. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Now, the next two versions are ones I always, I always go to the King James or New Living Translation to get my foundation and get my base. But then when I want to hear a little bit more and I want to get a little, some adjectives on it, add a little spice to it to make me really get it in the mind, I go to the Amplified. The Amplified says, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs. But be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually. Because you might think one way when you're young, but as you mature spiritually, your thinking should begin to change. By, renewing, uh, by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes. Focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes attitudes so that you may prove for yourself can't nobody else prove it to you i don't care how much pastor ed says something and gives you the word i can't prove it to you nor should you believe just believe what i'm having to say you should go and study the scriptures for yourself so that you may prove for yourself what the will of god is that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you that's the amplified and finally, the message. The message, the message really gets, gets in there. And the message, this one is uh, verses 1 and 2. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Here we go. Verse number two. Here we go. Do not become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit in without even thinking. When you're around in a crowd of people, do they know? And I'm not saying you got to go quote scripture, but do they know you're a believer? Does the light shine in you? Or do you fit in so well that they start talking about this, that, and the other? Or does... Or does your presence make their demons uncomfortable? Uh, let me just go back to that. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You will be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings out the best in you, develops well-formed maturity in you. I would just encourage you to go back and study Romans 12 and 2 on your own. There was so much in there. I really don't need anything else. I can stay right there in those scriptures and break it down word by word. Anyway, that, that's, that's our foundational scripture. So today, Paul, in, the, in, the, in that one verse, Paul is giving us an equation. First, there's subtraction, then addition, and finally, an outcome. So let's break this down. Today, we're going to do scripture mathematics. Scripture mathematics. And I got a, I got a math major back there, my brother Trevor, he, in math. So he might, he might have to you know, give me a couple pointers and stuff because I was all right in math. The first thing is subtraction. What is subtraction in, in terms of that voice? It is basically saying no to the world. The first thing Paul invites us to do is simply say no to the world. And in our life, there's a lot of things that we can say no to. Sometimes we say no, sometimes we don't say no. Now, my sister, my sister is vegan. She say no to meat. 
She said, she just said, and it, it, it was a process, but after now, right now somebody come with you with a, with a rib with some barbecue sauce on it, you probably going to just turn your nose. You're just going to say no. And that's what Paul is telling us to do. He's simply telling us to say no to the things of this world. See, in life we have patterns. We, sometimes we can get into patterns. And sometimes they're healthy patterns, and sometimes they're, they're not so healthy patterns. For example, some people, they may wake up early, grab a cup of coffee, spend time with the Lord, do a workout, all these things. Those are healthy patterns. But sometimes we get into unhealthy patterns. Sometimes we get into things that, that take us off key. I used to coach high school football, coach for about 10 years, and if anybody's been in any type of sports locker room, especially from the male side, can't speak on the female side, but there's a lot of inappropriate conversations going on in the locker rooms. It's a lot of cussing going on in the locker room. It's a lot of stuff that's unhealthy. And I stopped coaching for a period of time when my youngest daughter was born. I, you know, Pastor Pearl, she needed some help, and so I took some time off, and, and I helped out, and it was around, around the house. But then after a period of time, I wanted to go back to coaching. Well, when I start changing my life for Christ, I stopped cussing. You know, I, I stopped cussing, and then actually, funny thing is, cussing actually used to make my skin crawl. So I had stepped away. I had changed the pattern. But when I went back to coaching, and I want us to be careful as believers, because sometimes, you know, we go into a situation, into a scenario where we think we're going to change the atmosphere and, sh and shift and change everything, and we end up getting shifted and changed. I went back into coaching and around these guys, and I had major mad love for them. And I didn't have an expect, you know, I didn't have an expectation for them, and they didn't have an expectation that they were going to change who they were. I can tell you within a matter of a couple of weeks, oh, the words was flying, the F-bombs was dropped. It was, it was coming it was coming out, and, my, and, and it wasn't even confined to the locker room or to football. <laughs> Pearl was looking at me like, what in the world is going on? I was letting stuff slip at home, and then that, I got into the pattern of that, and then I got into a pattern of unhealthy drinking. Some people have a sip of wine or beer here, there, everything in moderation. All things aren't expedient to me. Everything is lawful unto me, but everything is not expedient. I got into unhealthy drinking. There is such a thing as unhealthy drinking. There's a thing as unhealthy eating. Twelve cookies is not healthy. And then I began to as okay, cussing, now the drinking, and then now the thoughts that weren't really coming before began to come again in my mind. I had developed an unhealthy pattern. I was falling in. I was actually fitting into the coaching system without even thinking about it. We can't allow the things of the world to overtake us. There might be some things in your life right now that you might need to have a conversation with. I think it's healthy to talk to yourself. I think it's healthy. Some people say it's not. It's, it's okay to talk to yourself as long as you don't answer back. Who else going to answer if it's just yourself? <laughs> and you how about we do this and we talk to those sins? Hey, and, and I'll, I'll use one, the, 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 the big sin. Fornication, you're in my life right now. You're causing me all kind of havoc and, and rough shot in my life. But I am right now, I am saying no to you. I am saying yes to the word of God. I am moving you out of my life and I'm moving forward. Let's have a conversation with that unhealthy pattern or that thing that we need to say no to. Because sometimes we need to hear our own words come through our ear gate. That's why it's important to read the word of God out aloud. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It's nothing more important than hearing you speak the, the word of God over yourself, over your family, over your children. You might pray for your children every night, but do they hear you speak the word of God over them? You might pray for your spouse all the time, but does she hear you or does he hear you speak the word over them? So we got to talk to it. And you got to convince yourself that they're gone. In advance, telling that sin whenever it comes up, the answer is no. You can't have my life. So whoever, whoever's having an unhealthy life right now, the first thing we got to do is we got to subtract. 
That word, that word says do not. When I hear the word not, I'm thinking take away, don't do, subtract. We have to say no. That's point number one, subtraction. Say no, conforming to the world, following their customs, copying the behavior. Point number two is addition. And in this case, addition is following yes to the way. So if any of you, I know, I know Rebecca, Bible scholars, back in the day, those who followed Jesus were following the way. That's what they call it, the way. When you follow Jesus, it was called the way. So we are saying yes to the way. See, in Romans 12 and 2, Paul seems to be concerned about how we think. How we think. Our thinking is one of the most important things. It's where we get our growth potential. And, you know, sometimes the, the temptations of the world, they begin with a thought. You know what? It's Thursday. It's about 730. I'm going to just check on her to see how she's doing. It begins with a thought. I'm just going I'm just going to see how she's doing, you know. You know, I'm just going to be I'm just going to be a believer of Christ. I'm just going to see how she's doing, let her know that we love and care for her. Next thing you know, you're in your car, you're driving. It only began with a thought. Got to say no to that and then yes to the way. How do we how do we do this addition? We had to have the right type of thinking, the right thought process. And how do we do that? We do it by putting positive things in our life. So we're talking about transformation, and transformation requires a change agent, right? It requires a change agent. If you're about to lose weight, your change agent is probably you, and may it could be your physical trainer or your group class. You need a change agent agent. Well, who's our change agent for transformation? Because we're not talking about just uh, uh, necessarily losing weight. You know, I've been saying, I'm bes- I've been saying, I, I saw a little uh, TikTok, I think it is, the lady says, I'm about to lose weight, y'all, I'm about to lose weight, but, but before I lose weight, anybody out there like me, Chevy? <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> anyway, our change agent is through Christ. Through Christ. Did you, did you say yes, babe? You said, okay. I, <laughs> yes. Christ. So first, our change agent is Christ. Well, first, when we become into Christ, we are baptized into Christ. The first baptism, when we say that we're believers and we believe that he died, uh, uh, he was died, he, he was buried, and he rose again, we are baptized into the body. Christ is our change agent. Once we have come into the body, then we are spiritually circumcised. That's not a male thing or a female thing. That is the removal of sin from our life. We have to be buried and raised with Christ. We got to believe that if Christ died, I also have to die to self. Hard, though. Hard. I like self. I like what self likes to do. And then finally, we've got to renew our spirit. Our spirit is renewed, excuse me, our spirit is renewed when we come into the body of Christ. Point number two is we've got to do it. Here's where the addition comes in. It comes in with the renewing of the mind. If you look at Romans 12 and 2, it says, do not be conformed, but be ye transformed. Let's change that word, but. Let's change it to also. The addition. Be not conformed. Also, renew your mind so that you can be transformed. That's the addition part. Renewing of the mind. The word of God says, let me hide your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. That is the renewing of the mind. What is the renewing of the mind? What, is that, what does that mean? What does that look like? In Colossians 3, uh, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, it says, setting our minds on the things above. 
It means that we're not focused here on the, the things in the earth realm. Does that mean we walk around in the clouds? No, but we're always in a mindset where we're talking with Christ. We're seeking to do what he wants us to do. And guys, I, I've said this before. I will continue to say it. If Christ wants us to have the abundant life, and he wants us to live it right here and where we are, and he created these bodies, and he created these motions and feelings, he wants us to have fun in this life. He wants us to enjoy this life. It's okay, Christians, to go to the movies. It's all right, y'all. It's okay to play cards, y'all. Keep the gambling out, but it's okay to do some of those things that we have been steeped in religion and tradition, and we take those things on, and, and, and then we try to put it on other people. God wants us to have an abundant life, and he wants us to have joy. So we must set our things on the things that are above. In Romans 8 and 5, it says, setting our minds on the things of the Spirit. That means not, walk not in the flesh. Walk not in the flesh. The lust of the spirit, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those are the things that get us down. The lust of the spirit, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. We must focus on the things of the spirit. Focusing on the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, all of those things. We've got to continue to feed our mind on the word of God, prayer and fellowship. This part right here, this is important, y'all. This is, this is important for us to fellowship or koinonia, which is authentic fellowship. We've got to do this together. The Bible talks about this concept in uh, Psalms, Psalms uh, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. It says, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. Subtraction. Subtraction. Take it out of my life. And sometimes, we, sometimes, sometimes we don't even need God to tell us what those things are. Sometimes we know what they are. We know exactly what they are. Man, I, I, you know, I can tell, tell you myself, I have been transformed. There are a couple people in here, one, one in particular, we kind of talked about her, the math teacher. He has seen the side of me that y'all be like, is that Pastor Ed? Wow. I mean, I, I know you probably even look up here like what my nickname in, in, in college was Wolf Top. I know he looked like, is, 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 that, is that Wolf Top? I remember when. I remember when. But you know what? And th this is important for us. My brother who was there during that time and saw all the dirt and all the filth and all the nastiness. I just said that. He never brings it up. He sees me now where God is. Make sure as you move forward in your transformation, if you've got to subtract people, Go ahead and subtract them out of their life. Get with people who are going to be your best cheerleaders, who are going to encourage you to move forward. I didn't even finish my scripture, but it says, But whose delight it is in the law of the Lord who meditate on his law day and night. Meditating day and night. This book of the law shall not depart out of the mouth, but y'all shall meditate it on it day and night that you may observe to do. So I'm reading the scripture to observe, to see. I also, because we're reading it, I said to hear, to observe, to do all that is written therein. I don't want to just read it. I want to get it in, in me, and then I want to, boom, I just want to, I want to walk it, I want to walk it out. So David is a walking, talking example of, of the importance of meditating on God's word day and night. God's desire is that we not just have the word near us, but, we, but actually in us, in our minds, in our hearts, and throughout our lives. It is only with a renewed mind that we can have full transformation, with a renewed mind. Point number three. Point number three is 
We talked about subtraction. We talked about addition. We said no to the world. We said yes to the way. What is the outcome that we're looking for? What is on the equal other side of the equal sign? It's transformation. We want God to transform our lives. And I'm going to quickly run through this, a couple things about transformation, and then we're going we're to you know, get out of here. Transformation, the word, what does the word mean? The Greek word is metamorpho. It's literally where the word metamorphosis comes from. The, 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 the literal translation says to change into one form, to change into a, another form used to describe a change in form. What's, a, what's one of the most dramatic changes in form that we know in, in the natural world today? Caterpillar, caterpillar to the butterfly. It's dramatic. It's not only a change in appearance, but it's a change in character. Man, the caterpillar is slow, it's sluggish, it's doing its own thing. The butterfly is beautiful, it's elegant. It's a change not only in appearance, but change in character. You know, it's funny because they talk about when people lose a lot of weight and they, they really transform their lives from a weight perspective, they say the confidence level. They not only look different, but they act different. And sometimes people, sad as it is, people may be married to someone who lose a lot of weight, and the person who was watching them lose the weight, sometimes they end up splitting apart because the person says, you're not the same person that you was before. No, I changed. I transformed. It, it, see, that transform of losing all that weight, it's an inside-out thing. It's not just I changed my diet and I exercised, but I had to change my thinking. I had to change my mindset. I had to move forward uh, in the new things and get rid of the old things. Transformation is a change not only in appearance, but a change in character. What's the concept of transformation? The idea that Paul commanded was this. Christians, believers, disciples, those that follow the way, are to undergo a complete change which under the power of God will find its expression in character and in conduct. A change in character in conduct. But that's a process, y'all. Transformation is not a one-time event. It is a process that takes commitment. It takes consistency. And we are the ones, the believers who are there, who are maybe leading somebody to Christ or watching somebody or walking with them. Let's, let us not forget how long our transformation took and or is still taking we have this thing that people come in and they, they go to the altar and they get saved and they profess the, you know, the Christ. And then the next day, everything that they used to do is supposed to be gone. No, no, it is a process. And we have to allow the spirit to work in us to move the things that God doesn't want there, the things that don't look like God, the things that take me away from God. We have to allow the process to work to move those things out of our lives. See, we are the caterpillars who should be turning into butterflies. We are the cat, and, and a church, a healthy church, it has some caterpillars and it has some butterflies. You know why? Because the, the butterflies are going to find some other caterpillars so they can become butterflies. But we love the caterpillars the exact same way that we love the butterflies. That's what the world needs to see. The world needs to see that we love all. Being transformed, be transformed is a continuous verb, not a one-time action. Also note here that Paul used the passive voice. He indicated that transformation is something we allow to be done to us. God is the one that allows us to be transformed. He is the one that works within us. We're not, we can't do it by our own power. We don't do it by our own power. The farmer, he plants the seed. He tills the ground first, makes the ground fertile. And then he plants the seed. He puts water on it. 
Since the farmer has no control over the son, God is controlling the son and gets son. But God is the one that makes the seed grow. Some plant, some water, but God gets the increase. Same thing with transformation. We want things to happen like this. We want it to happen like this. We want it to be like the Transformer movie where we can change and transform on demand. That's not how it works. We got to allow God to work the process out in us. And maybe we want to transform right now. Maybe we want the change to come right now. But are you willing to get up each and every day and it hasn't happened? Are you willing to put one foot before the other, one foot before the other? But then you get a step back. When you get that step back, are you willing to take a step forward again? Or you say, you know what, man, I got pushed back. I got pushed back. I'm 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 going to stay right here. I'm going to bury my talent in the sand because I'm afraid that God might not do it. See, he didn't transform his talent. He just waited. He didn't have any addition. He, his mind was not renewed. We got to submit to powers, God's power and his grace for true transformation. And then transformation is an imperative. What does that word mean? Oh, imperative. It means it's essential and it's important and it's urgent. Transformation is urgent. God wouldn't have put it in the scripture if it wasn't important. And here at the place, that's, that's connecting in community through Christ. So the change agent for transformation, change by renewing our mind, changing our thinking, saying no to the ways of the world for what? Abundant living through him, through Christ. What's the motivation? I'm, I'm going to speed through these. What's the motivation for transformation? The mercies of God. In verse number one, he tells us, I beseech you. He, it's the mercies of God. The nature of our sin and our need for God's mercy. That's the motivation for transformation. His grace in sending Jesus to overcome sin. Guys, we, 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 get, we pass by that so often. I just talked about, tell you about my filth. I didn't tell you the details, but I talked to you. It was bad. But he sent Jesus for me and for you and you and you and you. He was more than able to do. Not only was he able, but more importantly, he was willing. He, Jesus was chilling with the Father. He was cold chilling. There was They probably wasn't watching Netflix. They was probably watching, you know, Showtime or something like that. But he said, I will get up. I will go. I will put on flesh. I will take upon the sins of the world. I will go into the garden and I will sweat blood. He said, God, if this cup can pass me by. So it was hard, y'all. The God, the part of the Godhead bodily, it was hard. For him, but he endured. And because we're in him, we can endure. Because we're in him, when it's tough, we just got to look up. We, when, when it's, when it, because it's in him, we know, his word says it, that I will not leave you. I will not leave you. Hey, you guys who have kids, sometimes when you used to put them to bed when they were young, and you would say goodnight, and they were still awake, and then you would just sulk back into the corner, and you would just sit over there in the corner or you're, if you were like me you would go in and you would put your head down really close to see if they were still breathing God never leaves the room he never leaves the room he is watching over you every moment of your life he desires only good things for you the love of Christ God you know I, I just talked about that. He came. The love of Christ. Such love compelled Paul to live for Jesus. He says in Galatians 2 and 20, he says, I have been crucified in Christ, and it is, I, it is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. It is the love of God. And finally, the last motivation for transformation, excuse me, y'all, is 
it's the only alternative. It's the only alternative to being transformed in Christ. Because guess what? If we're not transformed in Christ, we'll be transformed by the world. We'll be conformed by the world. The word conformed is suke maximo. It's the Greek word, suke maximo, which means to be conformed to another's pattern. Whose pattern are we going to be conformed after? Whose pattern are we going to be conformed to? Y'all, I didn't see some Christians, and I know y'all didn't see some Christians. You're like, whose pattern are you for? You just as mean and nasty, and, and somebody puts you out in the greeter space? Are you serious? On the welcome desk? Man, you need to be in the back somewhere until you can be transformed. <laughs> Stop being fashioned and having the habit of the world. Last point, and we're, we're going we're gonna to move, discerning your purpose. The last part of that scripture says that you may test and know what is God's pleasing and acceptable will for your life. We spend, people on this earth, we spend countless, countless time trying to figure out what our purpose is in our life. What does God want me to do? Where am I supposed to be going? Who should I be ministering to? Christ is the only one that can give us meaning. And as you begin to be transformed, and it's not, it, guess what? We'll never be completely transformed into the fullness of who God wants us to be. It is a process. It goes step by step by step by step. But as God transforms you and he changes you a little bit, he'll show you a little bit more of your purpose. Now, the key thing Mandy said it. When he shows you that little piece, what you gonna do with it? What you gonna do with it? Chris is Chris has already left. Uh, Chris was up here doing the welcome, and this brother he played college football, very dynamic, gregarious person. He said he got he got he got a vision about wanting to be a DJ. He got a vision. Had never done DJ. Got a vision about it. Talked to his wife. Said, hey, babe, I need a little bit of cash to, to get this started. Can we, can we pull some money from here and there? And he got started with the little thing that he heard. And then what, he, what did he do? He began to practice. He would get on Facebook Live and he would practice DJing, no, having no experience, no skills at doing it. And some people were very helpful. And some people were like, boy, what are you doing? Get off my screen. But he did that, and he, and, and, and he began to transform, and God began to show him his purpose. He began to walk it out. Let me tell you, that brother stays booked right now. He has to put time to not get booked so he can spend time with his wife because he took that little piece that God showed him. Man, he said it today. What are you going to do with God has told you, he has shown you? When are you going to write that book? When are you going to start that business? When are you going to start that podcast? What are you going to do what God has already shown you? That's how you define your purpose in doing, being obedient. If you ask God to order your steps, are you going to be obedient to the steps that he told you to take? I've already been disobedient. When God, when I got up here, when I was sitting in that seat, and I don't have any idea what the significance of this is, but he told me, when you get up there, to take your shoes off. We read it in the Bible when Moses was there and he took off his sandals. And he told him to take it off because it was holy ground. I don't know what the significance of this is, but he told me to take my shoes off and I, was, I delayed my obedience. You guys, if we want to really be transformed by God, we've got to listen to his word, let it minister to us, let it marinate, let it soak in, like when you soak in some food to cook, let the seasoning get in, let the seasoning of God's word get inside of you that you may be changed, because it's not too late. As long as you have breath in your lungs, it's never too late to have a profession of faith. I know we're talking about faith, but what, what, what is it, Pastor Ed, what does this have to do with faith? We have to have faith that we can be transformed in God's presence. We have to have faith that we can be transformed by his word. We have to be faith that he will do what he said he would do. Some of us are looking to have vibrant faith 
we got to have it through relationship with God. Some of us, our faith has gone cold. Our relationship has gone cold. We have to reinvigorate it, reignite it. we got to stop letting the distractions of this world collide, crash, knock off course that which what we know in our spirit God is doing in our lives. And, I'll, and I'll, 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 as a la- I'll wrap up, the last thing I'll share with you it talks about be not conformed to the ways of this world and the ways of, think, uh, uh, of, of our culture. As believers, God is saying, do not be conformed to what I perceive God to be. We all have God talks to us and he speaks to us and we've become comfortable with that. Hey, this is God, how sp- he speaks to me in dreams. Or he speaks to me in pictures. Or he speaks to me this way. And he will probably continue to speak to you that way. But we've got to open up our minds. We've got to say yes to the way that he may speak to us in a different way. By the renewing of our mind. You can. Yep. I love this. This is how we do things at the place. Can you hear me? Okay. So when Pastor Ed did that, um, I was immediately reminded when I was an undergraduate, um, I studied art history. And I had a moment in class where we were like studying all this ancient stuff, you know. And someone put on the screen uh, something called King Narmer's pa- uh, palette. It was, a, it was a palette. You can look it up. It was a palette that they would use in Egypt to, like, do the makeup, you know, for the pharaoh and stuff. So it was this very, like, ceremonial. It really, it may not have even been used that much, but it had a little place for the eye makeup that they would put on the pharaoh. But what's interesting is if you flip it over, it had all this fancy art. And some of the art that they had on it was the pharaoh standing at one end and his enemies all sprawled out behind him. But what's interesting is the pharaoh didn't have any shoes on. Behind him, his servant was holding his shoes. What's interesting is taking off the shoes. And I, I was like, how do we not know this? In Egypt, at least according to this palette, I don't know how it relates in time to where Moses was. But in Egypt, in that palette, they're showing that to the pharaoh, taking his shoes off was a sign of victory, that it was holy ground because his enemies were in front of him. So when God spoke that to me, I'm like, how did we not know this? When, and, and it was actually a, a, um, the professor who pointed it out was a believer. So he had kind of made this connection himself, Old Testament, um, and he was spirit-filled too, which is interesting. But um, the concept of what he was saying to Moses was take off your feet, your shoes, for this is holy ground. Now, we've seen that as God just saying, I'm speaking to you right now, Moses. But what God was also doing is stirring in him victory, his victory. Now, as Pastor Ed said, did he, he have the steps he had to take? Yes, but who was the one doing the victory? Mm. And how many times was he told no? Part of the reason why I wanted to say that today is because I believe that is prophetic for what God is doing here. I, for many of you guys, you may have been on the right path, and this is just a continuation. But I will tell you, you can ask my sons, this morning, like the past probably three weeks, but especially this morning, was like, oh, it was one of those moments And I believe that this morning is a burning bush moment for us. Mm. The fact that you're willing to do something very silly in our culture today, right, to prove the point that when you're you're talking about how we have to have faith in God, God does not leave us hanging. He speaks to us in our language. Hey, Moses, this is going to be really hard. Really, you're going to be told no over and over again, but I've already given you the victory. So this stuff that may seem impossible for us to do, how am I supposed to get rid of that and go towards that? It's not us. It's him because he has already promised to give us the victory. Amen. 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 Praise God. Krista, can you come play? Wow. So that just really just spoke. We often question God. I literally was sitting here like, and, you know, I just talked about saying no to the ways of the world. My first inclination was, 
God. No. No, I'm not doing it. And we've all had moments like that where we say, God, I love you, but I'm not doing it. We, we do that with our loved ones. We do it with our children. We do it with our spouses. We sometimes, and sometimes it's not even a good reason. I know I've said that to my kids many times. Can I do such and such? No. Why? Because I said so. Thanks for raising your hand, Becca, and, and, and coming up. You know, most people would think, you know, that's unorthodox for someone to come up in the midst of a sermon. But, but it spoke to me, and I'm sure it spoke to somebody else, and not only here present, but spoke to somebody out there watching via live streaming. Transformation is not an easy process, y'all. Transformation is not even things that we, we say it in church, but are we really committed to see it happen? God is calling us to, to come into his space. To give our bodies as a living sacrifice. That the potter may place his hands on you. I just want you to imagine right now that the potter is placing his hands on you. And not just outside on your physical body, but in those places that, from when you look at somebody you can't see, whether it's my heart, whether it's my mind, my will, my emotions. Maybe it's a place that's broken or, or, or not operating in a line the way God desires for it to be aligned. I want you to imagine right now that the potter has his hands upon you. And he's molding, and he's smoothing, and he's shaping, and he's transforming as you continue to renew your mind. Thinking about it is renewing your mind. Even doing that right now in this place, may, which may seem silly, is a step of faith. Can I have faith right now as I might renew my mind? As Pastor Ed has asked us to imagine, renew my mind, have my mind to know that the potter is touching me. Will you let your faith, will you have some maybe faith for it right now? Would you just have 51% faith for it right now that he's touching you, that he's changing you, those things that you've tried to do on your own? and it's just not working and you're ready to give up, it's never too late. And as long as you have breath in your lungs, God can change and he can transform. Will you stand with me, please? This morning we've talked about a lot. We've talked about scriptural mathematics we've talked about subtraction which is saying no to the world's ways values priorities we've talked about addition which is renewing our thinking and we talked about god transforming but allow that transforming to take place we've got to be in right relationship with him we've got to know him and so some of you Many of you are already in relationship with him now. And you just want to continue that transformation process. Allow him to continue to work in you. But some of you don't know him. You've never met him. You've heard about him. They talk about this Jesus, but I don't know who this is. Today you have that opportunity to come to know him. So I'm just going to recite a few things. I'm going to ask everybody here, even if you're already saved, to recite them with me wherever you are, sitting at the coffee shop, in your bed. I just want to have you to recite them with me. Father, I thank you for sending your son Jesus, who knew me before I ever was. Thank you that he died for me. He was buried and rose again that I might have life. Jesus, today I invite you into my life. 
that I might be in relationship with you and that you may change me for the better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.